Okay. Okay. Uh, let's start with the, with the very start. In '97, you made your first film called Pieces. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it was, it was a 16 mm film which you technically had to put in the cold storage because you ran That's out right. of funds. <laughs> yeah. Now you have access to all the funds you wish or you aim to get. How do you look at that journey from putting in cold storage to getting access to pretty much? It's a long way from having <laughs> our, our negative uh, in, a, in a refrigerator in our garage to where we are now. But as Ant said uh, uh, many times in the past is that, you know, no matter how much money you have when you're making a movie, at some point you run out of it, you know? So it really is just about the scale of ambition matching uh, uh, the amount of money that you have. Uh, but it's a fascinating journey for us, you know? I don't know that we feel any different than when we used to keep our negative in the fridge to, to where we are now. I don't think so, yeah. yeah. Really, so does, does budget matter now to you all? Oh, I only yeah. have $200 million or $3 million. Does the number uh, give you, like, a, make your sense, oh, I've reached this stage in life? Does a number attached to a project give a feeling of, oh, I have arrived, I've not arrived? You know what, here's the thing. We, look at, certainly it's an incredible opportunity to have money available to make a movie. We never take that for granted, ever. Mm. But I would also say that I don't, you know, at the end of the day, the number is just, represents what, the, what tools you can use to make the movie. Uh, what kind of actors you can afford to be in the movie? What kind of equipment can you afford to make the movie with? What kind of locations can you travel to to make the movie? Or what kind of sets you can build to make the movie? It's like, it all just basically boils down to that. So, you know, it, you know, every movie needs a certain amount of money to do it properly. You know, some movies are smaller, some movies are larger. So for us, it's just the, the, the money is really just reflective of what we're trying to achieve in the first place. And so uh, we're just grateful that there's enough there to do it. You know. Okay. Now, with Greyman, which I saw last night, and with all the films that I've seen of yours, um, the, basically the action films, you have to have two signatures. One is the, your, is the ensemble cast, and second is lace it with comedy moments. Like, for example, right. the one moment where I were in um, Steve, I mean, Steve, as I'm saying, Chris Evans breaks into the dry cleaner and says, I could have opened the door, the person. Right. Who, or when he shoots and says, morons. Right. So where does that comedy coming with action and ensemble come to How did that well, recipe come to you? Ensembles are important mm -hmm. to us because we grew up in a large family. So I think we understand that, you know, this, the, the large group dynamic. Uh, and it's interesting to us. We also like colorful characters. And, and also it's a way to make a story slightly more complicated. It's hard working within a two-hour format because everything really has been done. But when you have an ensemble, at least you can have characters come in and intersect uh, at surprising moments with different points of view. Um, um, so that's really the reason why we gravitate towards ensemble. I think it just offers more storytelling uh, opportunity. Humor, humor is important because, one, we have a very hard time taking anything too seriously. Two, we're, we're here to entertain the audience. We're here to have fun. I mean, we, you know, we do Commedia dell'arte. That's, that's our style, you know. Um, we're not Ibsen, you know. So um, um, we're here for, you know, the audience to have a robust experience. Uh, and uh, um, humor can, you know, alleviate tension. Mm. It can also heighten tension. So yeah. it has... It's a paintbrush that adds an, an extra color uh, to the work that you're doing. Okay. In one of the interviews, you've said that um, uh, how making larger IPs and then taking it forward into making it video games and merch is, a, is an important aspect of your company that you've made. Will in future, as industry as a such, will that decide how much, what films are made and what films are not made? I mean, we so. think, I mean, we're excited about the idea that it's evolving more right. in that direction because, you know, we've, we've said this before, but, you know, G Joe and I were film fans first. Mm -hmm. we weren't, when we were kids, we weren't making movies. Yeah. We didn't start to make movies until we were in early 20s, so we had a, a, an important phase of our life where fandom was how we engaged with movies. Yeah. And when you're a fan and you find something you love, you want to explore it in so many different ways. You want a poster of it. You want a you know, video game of it. You want to spend time thinking and dreaming about it in ways that sort of expand upon your initial experience of it. So we're very excited as creators to be able to explore material like fans would in terms of finding the various expressions you can do with it and the various types of experiences you can have with it. So we like that, and, and we think the media landscape is evolving in that direction. 
and we think uh, we see how people are responding to that kind of engagement in their favorite material, and we think there's a lot of possibility in the future uh, in terms of exploring uh, certain uh, narrative universes through a, through a variety of platforms. We're in the post-pandemic world right now. Uh, what are that one thing or two things that you wish changes about filmmaking has changed or will change? I mean, I certainly think that, you know, digital distribution is here to stay and it's going to be an important part of storytelling moving forward. Uh, I think that, you know, movies, the theatrical experience is going to be spectacle driven. Uh, uh, and I'm okay with that. I like... I mean, I want to have an event to go to the theater. Mm. Um, we consume so much content now that we're, we need digital distributors. It's, gonna be, it's like the main staple of the diet. And then when you want like a, you know, a, a well-cooked steak, you go to the theater. Um, so I think, um, I think that's the future of it. Uh, and uh, you know, we also think that the future holds a new kind of entertainment. We don't know what it is yet, but technology is advancing so quickly that I have to imagine that we're going to move from two-dimensional projection to three-dimensional immersion uh, once we have the right apparatus um, uh, to tell those kinds of stories. Okay. Between the siblings, uh, my mother says that if your enemy is in the last birth, you become siblings in the, in the current birth. That's <laughs> oh, what really? she believes. Wow, interesting. She so between the two of you all, who is the more naughtier one? Who, who makes peace first with the other one? Who convinces the other one? Who insta instigates oh a fight first? I eat a lot more chocolate than he does. <laughs> I uh, don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you eat dark <laughs> chocolate. I eat bad <laughs> chocolate. You eat good chocolate. I eat a lot of milk chocolate. He eats a lot of dark chocolate. Uh, I eat more pizza than he does. I don't he know exercises more <laughs> than I do. Um, a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard for us to analyze ourselves. It's, I think it's easier if you ask other people about how we... They may have a more entertaining perspective <laughs> yeah. on it. True, true. Yeah. Okay. What's the India plan now? Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The India plan? Yeah. Where, where mm -hmm. does India stand in the Abgo's... Uh, Ab, I'm saying Abgo is the right name for your company. Abgo or Ag... Agbo. Agbo. Yeah. Agbo. 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 Yeah. Agbo. So look at India... Look, India has always represented to us this very vibrant um, opportunity for filmmakers because you have such a strong industry here. You've created a lot of very talented people and you have audiences who are very passionate about filmmaking. So for us, you know, as storytellers, um, number one, we love to engage with passionate audiences. And number two, we love to find collaborators who can help us make really wonderful, fresh new things. Uh, for audiences, so there's all kinds of opportunity here. That's why you know we made extraction here. That's why um, we were able to uh, intersect with Danush and the Gray Man. Um, it's why we're making uh, Siddle, Siddle, a TV show for uh, the series for uh, Amazon here. There's all kinds of uh, 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 intersection points that we're we're energized by with any India, and there's more that we have we're not ready to announce yet. But there, you know, our relationship with India will last the. Uh, rest of our filmmaking lives, hopefully. Did you meet Raj and DK recently? Was, uh, have, oh, have you met before? They met me before. I'm done. Oh, yeah. Uh, Raj and DK? Yeah. You, yes, you, we're working with Raj and DK on a, a project called Citadel. Uh, we love Raj and DK. Have you met them before? Uh, because uh, prior I saw, to? Yeah. I can't remember if I met them when I was here last. I think I did meet them when I was here last time. I and mean, we've known them for about two years now. Yeah. yeah. So it's more of an online uh, discussion, more of? Uh, more of online, although they were traveling back and forth and, you know, uh, um, they're coming to see us next month in Los Angeles and we're going to talk through the show. Thank you. Thank you. Great questions. Great yeah, interview. that was Thank fun. Thank you.